they are making fun of us. They are making fun of us. Donald Trump thinks that people who work at McDonald's are a joke. Yes, they are making fun of you, but it's the polite thing to do at this point because, uh, you know, making fun of you in terms of the available alternatives, making fun of you is the nicest thing we can do. AOC, that was uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Sandy, Sandy Cortez, as she was known in high school, before she became very ethnic, muy ethnico, you know. AOC. And you see uh, Kamala, Kamala's on the loose, saying Kamala-esque things. Her brain is a no good. I, you know, you're looking across the Democrat Party, the the panoply of Democrat loons, the the spectrum. They are on the spectrum, aren't they? I think all of them are on the spectrum. Which spectrum are they on? I think they're on uh, multiple spectra. That's the plural of uh, spectrum. But never mind that right now. Happy Tuesday morning and uh, and welcome back. We continue to be reachable at 888-630-9625. And uh, between... Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Boy, if they didn't have the news media in their back pocket writhing around like, you know, lubricated uh, Mexican uh, jumping beans, they wouldn't be in the political business at all. They wouldn't be. They'd be. We, they'd deport themselves. I think they'd self-deport. You see, I don't know if you've been listening to the news this morning in Washington, D.C. Uh, some probably haven't. Some, some probably haven't. A Salvadoran man extradited to D.C. and placed under arrest for a 2013 murder, a homicide in Rock Creek Park, in the beautiful park, Rock Creek Park, our wonderful and lovely urban park. And it turns out that this uh, poor man was stabbed to death and left uh, face down dead in a creek bed because a Salvadoran man, not that all Salvadorans stab and murder people, because not all Salvadorans stab and murder people, just a bunch of them. And that's, uh, that's the thing about that. And the illegal alien thing and the gang thing and the trafficking thing. But the Democrats want more of all that. More Democrats, more murder. More Democrats, more child sex trafficking. More Democrats, more fatal drug overdoses. You know, the Democrats, they bring good things to life, don't they? Or is that, uh, that uh, I could get into a copyright infringement issue with that, couldn't I? Because I think there's a corporate logo. But that's not important right now. I may, as Jen Psaki likes to say, I may circle back. I may circle back to that El Salvador murder guy extradited and placed under arrest. But uh, I remember when we used to have control over our own border. Remember that? It wasn't even that long ago that in the United States of America... We controlled our, our sovereignty. We controlled our own borders. And we had a, you know, like a turnstile at the door. And we had a checklist. And we'd scan people to see if they were with Venezuelan gangs and just escaped from prison uh, before we waved them into your daughter's classroom. But the Democrats, they fixed all that, didn't they? And uh, listen, importantly, Election Day, because it's Tuesday today. It's Tuesday the 22nd. And that means it's two weeks today, two weeks from now, that we're going to have what we used to call Election Day before the Democrat Party took that away from us. Now we have election season, like the marching season in Bolivia with cocaine. It's a, uh, it's a crazy thing. But the Democrats, they've blown up Election Day. They've blown up gender. They've blown up family. They've blown up everything sane and rational because they're not liberals. They're the left. And did I mention how racist they are? Because they're incredibly racist. And they're, you know, they're a uh, control, their total dominance. They, uh, the Democrat Party had dominance over the, what they, you know, they called the black vote in the, in the 1850s and the 1860s because the Democrats, they got this three-fifths of a person thing going. And they, oh, and then there was slavery in the plantations that the Democrats had. So they had total control over uh, what we might call the black vote. And then somehow, because of the information dominance and the propaganda advantage that they have on college campuses and high school and grammar school, and hey, well, your daughter's uh, uh, your son now, because uh, they're uh, completely nuts. 
Uh, they uh, just uh, just amazing stuff. They they've been able to say, no, we're the party that represents African Americans, the Democrat Party, because of the bullwhip and Jim Crow and all that stuff. Uh, but they are losing their their grip to some degree, not nearly a, a great enough degree. Uh, over the black vote and the uh, Latino vote, or as Joe Biden would say, the Latinx, the Latinx vote, because Joe Biden views um, Latinos as not just an ethnic group, but also a bathroom tissue, also a bathroom tissue. So they're uh, losing some control, but they still have a total lock on like young African-American women. Uh, About 108 percent of them are going to vote for Democrats. But uh, amazing stuff. And, and we're being warned, you know, by the CBS election expert that, and I played, I think we played at least one soundbite of this guy on Friday, but we may have to play it again today because the uh, the so-called experts at the so-called news organizations, and those are two key so-calleds that I'm citing there, but the uh, the so-called experts, they're saying, like on CBS News, their election, election day expert, he's on there saying, oh, don't, don't go around being foolish, thinking that we're going to know who won on election day, because that's not going to happen. You know, when the Democrats win is after election day, when the votes are being counted in the various states and so on. And it's, I believe it was their boy, Joseph Stalin, history's number two mass murderer, and one of the forebearers of uh, today's Democrat Party. And it was Joseph Stalin, I believe, who said, it's not who votes that counts, it's who counts the votes, right? And after election day comes and goes, that's when the Democrats really get to work in Georgia and and in Nevada and in Wisconsin and in Pennsylvania and really it's just Philadelphia, and Pittsburgh and so on. And and that's when they when they really start counting behind the curtain and the doors are closed and they put placards up over the windows as they did last time around, so that poll watchers at the polls can't watch. Uh, which is the whole idea of being a poll watcher. You're at the polls and you watch. But on CBS News, what's the guy's name? David Becker. Oh, yeah, David Becker. He's the CBS News election expert, and he's warning us they're telegraphing what's coming. It always takes a long time to count ballots. Oh. We're going to see that again, and margins oh. are likely to be tight, so we might need to wait a few days in states like Georgia and elsewhere. Yeah, and then he went on to say it could be weeks. He said it could be weeks, could be days, it could be weeks before we know and uh, and and they and they love to hang it on Georgia. It's oh yeah, it's just Georgia because uh, we're going to blame Georgia. Maybe Stacey Abrams should go down there with uh, you know a green eye shade and and she could count votes cuz she's real good at that. So they're already telegraphing and and I got to tell you I was talking to a, a political friend yesterday and uh, and she said, "Oh, you know, look, the Democrats they do this and they do that before election day, but really where the rubber meets the road is after election day when the doors are all closed and the votes are being counted and they know that they have to win this county in Nevada and that county in Pennsylvania and this county in Georgia and that's where the Democrats really pull it out, right? The election officials are diligently often working 24 seven to count batches of ballots and report them out because we all want to know them but it's just a partial count until they finish and ultimately officially certify the election which will take weeks or days. Weeks or days. Why why wouldn't wouldn't you say wouldn't you say days or weeks rather than weeks or days? It could take months or weeks. No, no, no. You got that backward. Uh, all the geniuses are not very ingenious as it turns out after all. Pretty amazing uh, stuff. So, could be weeks, could be could be days, could be hours. Hey, I remember when we used to have an election day and it was one day and everybody showed up to vote because we weren't all mentally impaired as it seems every Democrat in the country is today, starting with Joe Biden on down, and it's hard to go down from Joe Biden. Pretty amazing stuff we've got here. The Democrats. So in any case, um, the, uh, the headline today in the New York Times, with Election Day two weeks away, 15 million voters have already cast a ballot. And hey, who's counting those? Because we gotta got to keep your eyes peeled for those. What are the Democrats doing there? They look at zip codes and they know which uh, truckloads of ballots they're going to like more uh, than than the ones they're not going to like very much. Amazing stuff. Now, Kamala Harris, the Reuters news agency, Harris, Trump, pick up the pace. 
two weeks to Election Day, and they're picking up the butt. Here's the thing. Kamala is not. The news media is lying to us because they're filthy, rotten liars, and they lie all the time. Well, which members of the news media are filthy, rotten liars, Chris? Well, I'm sorry to say practically all of them. It's like, you know, which Chinese Communist Party members are the good ones? Well, there really aren't any good members of the Chinese Communist Party because, and they, uh, by the way, gave us the number one mass murderer in the history of the world, Mousy Dung. Everybody likes to call him Mousy Dung because that, but we got that. So, uh, you know what Kamala Harris is doing today? Two weeks to election day? Nothing. She has nothing on her schedule. She's not traveling. She's not campaigning. She doesn't have to. The New York Times and the Reuters News Agency are doing it for her, the Washington Post and CNN. The campaign is a uh, de facto campaign, and they Democrats don't even have to lift a finger. Uh, and if you raise an eyebrow, oh, what is it uh, now, Michael? And we have, I mentioned Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams was um, on the loose yesterday. And, and, and if you're not supporting Kamala Harris, it's because racism and sexism. John King on CNN, uh, if you're not supporting Kamala Harris, it's because of racism and sexism. They have one card to play. And then they abort 40% of the black babies in the womb this year again. Uh, just don't call them Nazis or fascists or anything like that. If they were putting these children on rail cars and bringing them to death camps, they couldn't do a more efficient job. But that's not important now. And also, the New York Post, Harris and Trump remain neck and neck. Neck and neck. Why do you have to bring neck into it? Uh, in the New York City suburbs, according to a Siena poll. Uh, but according to the polls, again, Kamala Harris is losing. She's lost more of the black vote than any Democrat in modern times, which is still a mystery to me. But that's, again, that's about information dominance. It's not really a mystery to me. It's just appalling to me, which is a little bit different. And then you got these billionaires. Mark Cuban, who has lost whatever was left of his mind, and Elon Musk, who may very well be the Leonardo da Vinci of our century. And Elon Musk, is he's offering uh, $1 million in prizes. And, and he for, uh, it's about voting. It's about Election Day. He wants people to get out and vote. And Mark Cuban, another billionaire who most of the time should just shut up. He, uh, he's welcome to say what he wants, of course, but it, he, it would be better if he just shut up. And uh, Mark Cuban came out and said really dumb stuff about Elon Musk. Uh, Elon Musk is one of the most extraordinary figures of our time, dare I say, of our century. And, and that's why the left is here to crucify him. You know, did you see, like, uh, we played a bit of it yesterday when Kamala Harris was at a rally and somebody yelled, um, uh, praise the Lord, and, or Lord, uh, uh, Jesus is Lord. And Kamala Harris said, oh, you're at the wrong rally. You're at the wrong rally. This was an amazing moment in American political history. Oh, you guys are at the wrong rally. And the mob goes wild. The crowd goes wild. This is the same crowd that crucified Jesus uh, millennia ago. This is the same crowd that would crucify Elon Musk if they're given half a chance to do it. It's the same crowd that inspired at least two would-be assassins to kill Donald Trump uh, before he could become president of the United States again. The left-wing mob is here, and they are rabble, and they are violent, and, and they've shot President Trump once. Oh, they, yeah, they, yeah, that's right, because they, uh, with the rhetoric, inspired the madness. There is no doubt about it. Amazing stuff. And uh, Michigan auto workers, this is uh, another uh, CNN headline, Michigan auto workers see more enthusiasm for Harris, but also more sexism and racism. You guys really just, you have like one string on your violin and no bow whatsoever, so it's just twang, 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 over and over again with your teeth like the goobers that you've become. Amazing stuff. Uh, uh, uh. And again, I just played for you the Christian students in Wisconsin. They went on television, the ones that said, uh, Jesus is Lord, you're at the wrong rally. Because remember, this is the party of the after-school Satan club. They 
love Satan. It's like uh, their whole Democrat party is like is like dinner in Rosemary's Baby. Uh, boy, are they not on our side. Amazing stuff. So I got a bunch of that for you. Uh, also, crazy statistics. President Trump went to McDonald's and the left had a mental meltdown again because President Trump went to McDonald's. And there are headlines like, he doesn't really work at McDonald's. He doesn't really work at McDonald's. You guys, it's low IQ theater for you guys, huh? I've got an update on the Sinaloa cartel out of merry old Mexico. Olivia Nutzi. Remember Olivia Nutzi? She was trying to have sex with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And her reporter boyfriend had to break off their engagement because she's such a hoser. Just a hoser. But uh, we got that. And Marion Barry, the late Marion Barry, is in the news. I miss Marion Barry. I miss Democrats like Marion Barry. Sure, he smoked a little crack and had hookers all over the place, but, you know, he was a better Democrat than the ones we have today. If today's Democrats would start smoking crack, hey, wait a minute, maybe Hunter Biden could be elevated to. We're at 888 630 9625. Keep in mind that according to the party of Jim Crow, that if you're not supporting Kamala Harris, it's because you're a racist and a sexist. They're already laying the groundwork for, uh, I guess, the, the second Democrat civil war because you're a racist and a sexist. And, and if she doesn't win, then white people are going to have to be held accountable, according to a woman who's a, a genius on CNN. Because the Democrat Party is uh, unwell, mentally unwell, violent and uh, dangerous. And they'd like your vote. All right, let's go to the uh, telephones. Real quick, let's go to Joe calling from Stafford, Virginia. Joseph, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Chris, pleasure. Um, I was telling Jeff, you know, I, I'm, I'm oldish like you. Anyway, you might remember, do you remember the DNC convention where they went crazy out of their minds to vote God, the word God, out of their platform. I think 2012 is probably. Yeah, it was 2012 or maybe even 2016 with Hillary in Philadelphia. Uh, but you're right. They, yeah, found, they, they found the word God in their platform and they all voted and uh, broke chairs and screamed, we got to get God out. Yeah, so here's here's the homework assignment for somebody. Um, was Kamala, like, really involved in that? And, you know, who knows what it'll do. It'll just be interesting to find out that, you know, she was one of the people up front. Well, uh, look, I mean, they take quick. you, if you want to say a prayer after a football game as a high school coach, they'll take you to the Supreme Court to try to stop you. You showed up to a Kamala uh, gathering, she'll tell you you're at the wrong gathering, and they did take the word God out of their platform. Bum, 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 bum. Now, Joe just uh, just calling in from Stafford, Virginia, beautiful Stafford, Virginia. Let's talk because we played uh, Kamala the other day at her rally and. And a couple of, uh, turns out, college students, a couple of college students at the University of Wisconsin yelled uh, that, you know, Jesus is Lord, I believe is their, is their phrasing. And she cackled and snarled like uh, Satan worshiping, baby sacrificing, organ harvesting, kleptocrat from hell, uh, from the after school Satan club. And, and she said, uh, you must be at the wrong rally. You're at the you're at the wrong rally. It's a pretty amazing moment in American political history. The godless commies are here. Uh, remember, we used to call them godless commies. They're still godless commies. I mean, let's make no mistake. They're godless and they're commies. But it was quite a moment. The uh, the moment at this Kamala rally. <laughs> oh, you guys are at the wrong rally. <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. We got the crowd is the rabble at the Roman Colosseum. Everyone will die before they're done. It's just uh, pretty amazing stuff. Uh, you're at the wrong rally. You must be at the wrong rally, right? Uh, well, the uh, the two young men. It turns out there were two young men at the rally, and they showed up, and they weren't necessarily Kamala supporters. All one of them said that he was a uh, Democrat, 
and that he was a Democrat voter. And I believe he said that he voted for Joe Biden in 2020. And um, now I think he's not anymore because he's seen the uh, the sharp tooth fangs of the, uh, you know, of the psychopathic godless commie Democrat Party. So students, and they were booed and jeered, and one of the young guys said that a, an old woman in her 70s actually assaulted him while they were being escorted out. They were kicked out of the arena for this because they were told they disrupted the Kamala event, right? Students who were booed and then booted from the Kamala Harris rally for saying Jesus is Lord, that's what they said, and for that they were told, you're at the wrong rally, and then they were kicked out of the Kamala event, uh, and Satan took their seats. They gave Satan two seats because he's got a huge rumpus, and uh, Satan likes to be comfortable, and the Democrats are there to provide comfort after school, Satan club and stuff. So the two University of Wisconsin students who Vice President Kamala Harris told Thursday were at the wrong rally after they proclaimed Jesus is Lord, gave their firsthand uh, account of what transpired. And it makes a Democrat nominee for president look even worse because while speaking about abortion and very enthusiastically pro-abortion because you got to snuff out 40% of the black population in the womb so that everyone has more parking and uh, more space in classrooms, you know, fewer children Uh, The Democrats see as being a very good thing. Although it's kind of ironic because it was Barack Obama, right, last week who said that we're not having enough babies to replace the... uh... Oh, I apologize. It was Bill Clinton. It was another crooked Democrat former president. Um, Bill Clinton is also a sexual predator. As far as we know, other than Larry Sinclair, uh, Barack Obama, not a sexual predator. And uh, I don't know, we'd have to ask Big Mike how that whole thing is going, but that's another thing. So while speaking about abortion at a rally at the University of Wisconsin, La Crosse, beautiful La Crosse, Wisconsin, uh, at the Recreational Eagle Center, Kamala Harris said, we're not going to be gaslighted on this. That's, they like that word. That's one of their little buzzwords the children learned recently. We remember Donald Trump hand-selected three members, and this is they, they misrepresent this all the time. They don't understand our system of government, even the basics. Pretty amazing stuff. We remember Donald Trump hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court. Well, he's the president. He nominated three judges, if that's what you mean, to be justices. But uh, she's really not a bright woman at all. With the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade. And they did as he intended. Now, uh, it was uh, overturned in 2022 And in 2023, we had a uh, more than one decade high in abortions. The year after Roe v. Wade was overturned, which was inevitable, I even learned in college years ago from a left-wing professor named Dr. Lawyer. His name was Dr. Lawyer. Uh, That was my professor, Dr. David Lawyer. And he was a left-winger. He he grew up in Harlem, and and he was a nice guy. I liked him. And he explained when I was uh, 20 years old, that Roe v. Wade was based on very shaky, faulty law, and everybody knows it. And his name is Lawyer, so he's got to know. And he's Dr. Lawyer, so he definitely knows. He's got both sides of this thing covered as Dr. Lawyer. And, and he explained to me when I was 20 years old in, in the class that uh, Roe v. Wade would be overturned because it was based on such shaky, wobbly law, and everybody knew it even when uh, in 1973 it became the law because of the Supreme Court decision in Roe v. Wade where uh, Jane Roe was a pseudonym. The woman's name was actually Norma McCorvey, and I met Norma McCorvey more than once, the woman in the uh, Roe versus Wade thing, and interviewed her at least once. And she later became pro-life, by the way, but never mind that. And then they threatened her and harangued her, and, and she became wishy-washy and wobbly later in life. But, but never mind that. That's not important now. But I did meet her a couple of times uh, here in Washington. So um, she uh, yelled, you know, you're at the wrong rally. And then, uh, pretty amazing stuff, they were ejected from the, uh, from the event because Luke Pulaski and Grant Beth, Grant Beth, his last name is Beth, B-E-T-H, and his first name is Grant, 
and they're uh, pro-life, and they, they shouted while she's yelling about this. They shouted, Jesus is Lord and Christ is King. And Kamala Harris said, oh, you guys are at the wrong rally. Now, I think you meant to go to the smaller one down the street. Now, if you're talking about Donald Trump's rally, it's uh, 50 times the size of your rally, but never mind that. And since Joe uh, brought it up calling from Stafford, Virginia, I did a quick look up, and it was 2012 when the Democrats removed the word God at the Democratic National Convention uh, from their from their platform. And even Barack Obama objected to it because he's many things, but he's not stupid, and he is a politician. He's wrong about everything, and he's, and he's corrupt, and he's anti-American, and he was mentored by a communist named Frank Marshall Davis, but never mind all that. But even President Barack Obama was alarmed that his own fellow Democrats adopted an official platform that removed any mention of God and the word God. And uh, when uh, asked why the Almighty was taken out of the, he requested that the Lord be placed back into the text. Barack Obama did. But the uh, Democrats, they, uh, they do sponsor after school, school Satan Club, and they don't like God at all. And they love abortion. And then they'll tell you that they they represent, uh, you know, everything they tell you. The opposite is true. I think is is pretty much what's going on. Just uh, just amazing stuff. Mm-mm-mm. All right. So now let me see. The uh, where do these guys go? Uh, oh, twenty eight and twenty. I was going to eighteen and nineteen, and that's completely wrong, because it's twenty eight and twenty nine. Much better that way. So um, here is the. Uh, let's see. Um, Hey, I don't see the, uh, let's go to, oh, the, oh that's the uh, students. Now, here's one of the students, Grant Beth, who is a student at the University of Wisconsin at La Crosse, and he's one of the uh, young men that was ejected from the Kamala rally for saying Jesus is Lord, and she said, you're at the wrong, the wrong rally, Christ is king, you're at the wrong rally, you should go to the Satan gathering down the street where we're going to be impaling children on large steel pikes. Uh, but here is, uh, here is Grant Beth. I wasn't really thinking about Kamala Harris. Um, obviously, she, she told us to leave a rally um, just for talking about our faith and saying Christ is King, Jesus is Lord. Um, we were mocked not only by Kamala Harris, but by her patrons as well. Um, I think it's important to understand that, you know, we were cursed at, I was assaulted at the rally, and Kamala Harris doesn't care about Christians in this country. That would be a generous understatement, I think. Uh, pretty amazing stuff. And, and uh, then Luke Pulaski, who's the other student, University of Wisconsin at La Crosse. I've, uh, I've actually been there to the University of Wisconsin at La Crosse. La Crosse is a great, a great and beautiful place. Um, but Luke Pulaski was the second student that demonstrated the poor judgment of yelling uh, Christ is Lord at a uh, Democrat rally. When she talked about abortion, uh, something went through through my mind that as a Christian, it's just not right. And that's when I decided to speak up and say Jesus is Lord. And after uh, her response, it's clear she doesn't deserve my vote and she doesn't care about Christianity. Well, that would be, uh, again, um, uh, very much an understatement. Now, uh, Luke Pulaski said uh, first he says that first he spoke up and said abortion is a sacrament of satan and kamala harris said raw, 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 raw. and she said anal nathrak luth vas and everybody said what is that that's the kind of satan talk what's going on with that and then uh, she uh, threw a child out to the crowd and they tore it limb from limb and ate it with their sharpened teeth that was kind of weird that was, I got to say, that was weird. And uh, so they were, you know, they, they, they were there and then they weren't. They figured, hey, big political event and she's running. And, and uh, one of them, I'm not sure which one it was, but I saw them being interviewed on TV, said, oh, no, I voted, I voted for Biden last time around. But, you know, now it's getting kind of weird. So um, amazing stuff. The Democrat Party is not on the side of, what are they not on the side of? Decency and is so, uh, and said, hey, I was pushed by an elderly woman 
We were heckled. We were cursed at. We were mocked. And uh, that's the biggest thing for me personally. In reflection of the event, Jesus was mocked. You know, his disciples were mocked. And uh, that's okay. In reality, we did God's work. And we were there for the right reasons. And God is watching us at this moment, said uh, young Mr. Beth. Isn't that uh, remarkable stuff? But the Democrat Party, they're, they're not really on the side of Western civilization. They're the left. And the left, now, look, I, I don't care if you're, uh, you don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to be a person of faith. You don't have to go to church every Sunday. Uh, but you should be respectful of other people's religious beliefs because this is the United States of America, and we respect other people's religious beliefs. Now, if you're a jihadi and calling for the Jews to be exterminated and wiping Israel off the map from the river to the sea, then the Democrats will all applaud you. Oh, yay, jihad. We love the jihad. You know, LGBTQ for Hamas, because they won't throw you off of rooftops or hang you upside down or anything like that. Isn't that amazing? But, uh, but the Democrat Party is, you know, it's intolerance in the name of tolerance, once again, which is something that they do so often. It's one of their, one of their trademark characteristics these days, to be intolerant, but always in the name of tolerance, because they don't make a lot of sense. Let's, uh, let's be fair, not a bright bunch. And very angry about President Trump doing the French fry machine at McDonald's, too. Really a meltdown over that, these people. All right, let's grab a, uh, let's grab a phone call, Michael. Let's go to Jay calling from Arlington, Virginia. You can call me Jay. You're on the Chris Plant Show. Good morning, Chris. Hey. Uh, picking up your question about why would uh, Kamala do this and what you mentioned the other day about being self-revealing, what is self-revealing about her response is that it's not a logical one scripted or thought out for her. Rather, it's a reflex, an automatic reflex that reverse her character and her soul. She didn't have to think about this. She didn't have to be told what this said. Uh, inside, she knew what she said. And I think that is the most uh, oh, awe-inspiring in a negative way uh, aspect of what she said. And I think all along, that's what this election has been about. And I think it, elections probably for time eternity or time eternal is that uh, – do you believe in a God-centered world or a man-centered world? And she pretty much answered that question for herself. Yeah, she did. And you're absolutely right that it was, uh, it was not scripted. It was not in the teleprompter. It was not thought out ahead of time. She responded uh, viscerally and immediately, and that's always dangerous for her because she's not at all intelligent or uh, well-informed or, or good at politics. And so she revealed herself. You're 100% right, Jay. And we should take that to heart because, you know, what is they, they used to love to say when uh, someone tells you who they are, believe them the first time. Exactly. And, yeah. And what does this tell, what does this uh, reveal about her, Jay? This reveals that she, uh, that to her core, she rejects a God-centered worldview. Um, and I think you refer to after school Satan clubs, and that sounds melodramatic, but uh, I think there's something to it. Yeah. And uh, the the leadership of that worldview, uh, while the useful idiots by definition are indeed idiots, the leaders of that worldview are actually quite calculating, quite intelligent, and quite scheming. Yes, um, and dangerous. And Kamala is her, their puppet. You're absolutely right, Jay. And keep in mind that she also blew off the Al Smith dinner, the annual Al Smith dinner in New York the other night, which is uh, a fundraiser for Catholic Charities, an annual event that presidential candidates have been attending for a great many years. And she blew off the Catholic Charities dinner. Um, I think she had dinner with Satan. Aren't they amazing? And, uh, hey, let's see if we can drive those abortion numbers up this year. Because we only had more than a million last year. And then they call the Gaza a holocaust, right? They use the words, but they don't know what they mean. I don't think they're on the side of civilization. Could it be? Saying? 22% of Americans identify as Catholic. Catholics will be a key demographic 
in every battleground state. I'm sorry, why is Vice President uh, Harris not here? <laughs> That was Jim Gaffigan, a uh, little audio difficulty there. Jim Gaffigan at the Al Smith dinner, the Catholic Charities fundraiser that she blew off because Satan. And uh, Jim Gaffigan even uh, scratching his head saying, you know, he's not a Republican booster or a Trump guy or anything, but he was scratching his head and uh, there was a, an uncomfortable murmur from the crowd of, of fancy New York elites, you know. Uh, remarkable stuff. Why was she not here? Because raw. Honestly, I, it's uh, it, it does. They always remind me of Rosemary's Baby at uh, at election time. You know where they sacrifice the. Eh, well, never mind that. You know. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to the telephones and talk to the nice people. Let's go to Aaron calling from Bristow, Virginia. Aaron, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hi, Chris. Thanks for taking my call. I appreciate it. Um, my point was that my biggest problem with this idea of that there being no God, I understand you can believe what you want. My biggest problem is how you then view the Constitution. If our rights are given to us by God, they can't be taken away by people. If you don't believe there's a God, then you believe that they can be taken away, you know, whenever you want, because it's not given to you by a higher power, by a God of some kind. That's right. The state is the ultimate power, and that's why exactly. they want to seize control. And uh, as I like to say, Aaron, the left is coming for your rights. And, yes, exactly. Uh, and we see it happening all over the place. I mean, again, a nice uh, high school football coach in Washington State wanted to say a quick prayer after football games to uh, express his thankfulness for the fact that his teenage boys were not injured during the game. The Democrats objected so much that they took him all the way to the Supreme Court trying to stop him from saying a quiet prayer right. after a football game, right? Right, right, because they believe that they're the ones who hand out the rights. So and that, they believe they can take away our guns, they can take away our right to assemble, they can take away all sorts of rights. That's right. And and what does that make them? That makes them like God. Exactly. They become God. 